Kurosuki Mihoda is acting as a host to some monster ladies in hopes of showing that humans and monsters can live in harmony. And though his intentions are far too pure, same is not the case with them ladies. Every chance they get, they try to seduce Kimihito, resulting in far too many misunderstood situations. This is Kimihito's journey as he lives with quite a few beautiful monster women, constantly dodging their attempts at getting him in bed with them. Monsters aren't just the stuff of legends anymore, they're living among people and they're looking for love. Three years back, this world came to an astonishing realization that creatures like harpies, centaurs, catgirls, and a whole area of fantastical beings aren't confined to the realms of fiction. They're tangible and real, complete with scales, feathers, horns, and fangs. Through the enactment of the Interspecies Exchange Bill, these once mythical entities have integrated into this world society, or at the very least, they're giving it their best shot. A human named Kurusu Kimihito is also inducted as a volunteer into the government exchange program, and his world is turned upside down. Kurusu Kimihito awakens and finds Mia, the snake-like Lamia, sharing his bed. As he gently wakes her up, Mia responds unexpectedly by embracing him tightly, with his face buried in her ample chest, and wrapping her lower snake-like body around him for warmth. However, her attempt at getting comfortable quickly escalates into a problem as the pressure from the lower body threatens to crush poor Kimihito. Struggling to free himself, he inadvertently touches the tip of Mia's tail which has an unexpected effect as it turns out to be a sensitive area for her. The touch fills Mia with pleasure, leading to an unexpected climax. My man Kimihito knows what he's doing. Once satisfied, Mia releases Kimihito and playfully teases him for his feistiness. After this amusing incident, Kimihito prepares a warm bath to help Mia warm up. Observing the modifications made to his house to accommodate the Lamia girl, he gets interrupted by Mia's unannounced and completely naked entrance, which leaves him flustered. Using her tail, she playfully pulls him into the bath, pressing her bare body against his back. She uses the pretext of mixed gender baths in Japan to keep him there. Kimihito, struggling to control his urges, turns on the cold shower to extract himself from the situation, much to Mia's chagrin. Leaving the bath, Kimihito proceeds to the kitchen to prepare breakfast, only to find his interspecies exchange coordinator, Smith, waiting in the dining area. Curious about her visit, he learns that he is here to ensure that he isn't engaging in prohibited activities with Mia or causing her harm. Kimihito vehemently denies any such actions, leading to a somewhat awkward conversation about maintaining Mia's innocence according to the interspecies exchange laws. Aware of the consequences, Kimihito assures Smith that he understands the law and would abide by it. The conversation takes a lighter turn as Smith humorously asks if Kimihito has explored Mia's body flirtatiously. However, their exchange gets interrupted by Mia, who uses her tail to swiftly whisk Kimihito away and cautions Smith to stay away from her darling. The coordinator responds by saying that she was just joking and leaves after a final warning, leaving Mia and Kimihoto to themselves once again. With the coordinator gone, Mia shares her vulnerability with Kimihito, expressing how his care had eased her initial fears due to society's discomfort with her snake-like lower body. Following this, she tries to have intercourse with her beloved darling, but Mia's attempts leads to an accidental injury, which breaks the mood. Later, they venture into town, with Kimihito remembering Smith's warning not to take Mia near a love hotel. During their outing, they visit various attractions and even an all-species lingerie store. A comical situation unfolds as Mia drags Kimihito into a changing room to help her choose lingerie. But he ends up accidentally taking her underwear outside and gets knocked out of the store by the Lamia because of this. As they continue their outing, they encounter a racist couple who harass Mia. Infuriated from their insults, Mia tries to hit them with her tail, but Kimihito gets in the way of the strike and takes a hit from her tail to prevent Mia from breaking the law. The situation attracts a crowd, which prompts Mia to request privacy, leading them unwittingly into a love hotel. After a bath, Mia, without any clothes on, confesses her feelings of vulnerability to Kimihito and says that he can do as he pleases with her. Their intimate moment gets abruptly interrupted by the interspecies police, including Smith. They ultimately explain their situation and are allowed to leave the hotel. Just as the duo along with Smith leave the hotel, they encounter the same racist couple again, resulting in Kimihito punching the man to defend Mia. Returning home, Mia questions Kimihito about his protective actions, which leads to a heartwarming conversation. However, Mia's attempt at another seduction gets cut short once more as Smith returns for dinner, bringing along the Lamia's forgotten underwear, which causes the girl to scream in embarrassment. As Kimihito and Mia hang their clothes on the balcony, he inquires about Mia's cheerful mood. She responds that it is because he gallantly protected her the day before. 
Inspired by this, Mia declares her intention to protect him as well and begins to step away from the balcony. However, a sudden scream from Kimihiro disrupts the scene and Mia turns around to witness a harpy girl snatching her unconscious darling. Sometime later, Kimihiro regains consciousness, finding himself suspended from a tree with a harpy by his side. He queries her identity and she introduces herself as Poppy, the harpy, leaving Kimihiro rather perplexed. Kimihiro's confusion grows as he asks about her lost family, only for the girl to indicate that he is here for that very reason. Their conversation is interrupted by Poppy's attention being drawn to an ice cream truck. Believing it to be food, she promptly brings Kimihiro down from the tree and starts heading toward the truck. However, after just a few steps, Poppy exhibits her forgetfulness by asking Kimihiro who he was, revealing her rather absent-minded nature. After sharing ice cream with her, Kimihiro learns that Poppy has run away from her coordinator, which he recognizes as a significant problem. Upon hearing this, Poppy drops her ice cream and gets sad as she was not able to take even a bite. Seeing the harpy all saddened, Kimihiro shares his ice cream with her, which she begins to consume in a manner that leads to onlookers thinking of him as a pervert. Great back and forth movement though. Reacting to the situation, he removes the ice cream from her mouth, inadvertently smearing her face in the process. He advises Poppy to clean her face at a nearby faucet, but her interpretation leads her to strip and bathe in a fountain, even dragging Kimihiro along. Their interaction gets suddenly interrupted by the arrival of Mia. A rivalry for Kimihiro's attention quickly ensues between Mia and Poppy, but he intervenes and asks them to handle their clothes properly. Following this, they looked around only to notice a small girl stuck in a tree, prompting them to join forces and successfully rescue her, though not without a few mishaps along the way. After the rescue, a police officer arrives and commends the group's rescue efforts. But after looking at the harpy, the policeman inquires about Poppy's host family, and Kimihiro impulsively claims to be her caretaker to prevent Poppy from being deported. While skeptical, the officer's doubts are quelled by the timely arrival of Smith, who presents Poppy's documentation and saves the day. Later, at their home, Smith reveals that she was in the process of arranging for Poppy to live with Kimihiro, much to Harpy's delight, and so Poppy officially becomes part of their household. The next day, while out shopping, Kimihiro accidentally collides with Centauria, a centaur girl with massive jiggly assets. Assets. I meant assets. <clears throat> she insists that he is her destined master, but Kimihiro dismisses her claim, attributing it to a cliched manga trope of soulmates meeting at an intersection. Their encounter takes an unexpected turn as they encounter a purse snatcher on a motorcycle. Kimihiro rides on Centauria's back despite her insistence that only her chosen master can do so, and the duo chase after the thief. The chase becomes chaotic, leading to Kimihiro inadvertently fondling Centauria's ample chest as he holds on for dear life. The situation escalates as her breasts get exposed due to the tumultuous ride. Seeing the sight, the thief loses control of the motorcycle and crashes. As a result of this, both Santeria and Kimihiro also crash, the former immobilized by the unexpected and admittedly erotic massage. Taking advantage of the confusion, the thief attempts to attack Santeria with her dropped sword. Kimihiro, however, leaps in front of her and takes the blow, but luckily survives thanks to the sword being a replica. Smith later explains that the act of Kimihiro riding Santeria without being her chosen master is akin to assault. In light of this revelation, Kimihiro apologizes to Centuria, who instead chooses him as her master and requests he call her Siria, officially joining their household. The three girls are engrossed in revising the interspecies exchange bill, particularly for Poppy's benefit. Amidst the discussion, an argument ignites between Siria and Mia, each vying for the position of being closer to Kimihiro. Meanwhile, Poppy whisks Kimihiro into the bath and he assists her in changing into a swimsuit. In a rather accidental yet innocent gesture, Kimihiro brushes against Poppy's chest, causing a moment of embarrassment for both. To cool down and control himself, Kimihiro enters the water, and Poppy joins him, attempting to entice him. However, Centuria intervenes, rescuing Kimihiro from the situation and flees with him. Finding refuge in a park, Kimihiro and Centuria share an intimate moment, holding hands and enjoying each other's company. However, their peaceful time together gets abruptly disrupted by the arrival of Mia and Poppy, who followed them. The atmosphere quickly shifts as the three girls start competing for Kimihiro's attention, alternating between affectionate gestures and arguments. Just as the situation escalated, Smith appeared with a tranquilizer gun, aiming to defuse the chaos, but accidentally hits Kimihiro instead. When Kimihiro regains consciousness back home, the girls express their remorse for their behavior, but he reassures them, dismissing their worries. Smith then drops a bombshell, proposed changes to the interspecies exchange bill, including a test from her where Kimihiro would need to marry one of the girls. 
With this revelation, Smith leaves, leaving Kimihiro to absorb the weight of the decision he might have to make. Later that night, Mia enters Kimihiro's room wearing a nightgown and attempts to seduce him by resting on his chest and brushing her long tongue against his skin. Before things could escalate, Poppy bursts through the window, similarly driven by primal instincts and a lack of underwear. But Seria intervenes, rescuing Kimihiro from Poppy's advances and explains that the girls are behaving like this because of the full moon. Soon, the effects of the full moon become evident on the centaur as well, as Seria too begins to show signs of being influenced, allowing Kimihiro to massage her breasts and even glimpse her bare chest. Amid this chaotic scene, Mia and Poppy also get back up, and it becomes clear that Kimihiro is in danger due to their uncontrollable actions. However, a moment of sanity emerges when they mistake ketchup on Kimihiro's shirt for blood, momentarily breaking the spell. The following morning, Kimihiro, nursing injuries, wakes the girls and realizes that none of them remember the events of the previous night. Taking advantage of the situation, he announces his plan to date all three of them as potential marriage partners before collapsing from his injuries. While awaiting dinner, Mia opens a pot on the stove, only to be attacked by a slime. Fortunately, she remains unharmed. At Kimihiro's request, Centauria explains that slimes are among the many species yet unrecognized by human society. A subsequent attack by the slime prompts Saria to defend Kimihiro with her sword. However, her weapon proves ineffective, resulting in both her and Kimihiro getting covered in slime. To rid themselves of the gooey substance, they decide to take a shower. As Kimihiro steps into the bath, Siria joins him, completely nude as she is unable to remove the slime on her own. He assists her with washing, inadvertently touching her rump. Sensing his touch, Siria informs him that the rump is a sensitive area, causing Kimihiro to panic and accidentally fondle her udders. After the awkward moment, they ponder why the slime attacked them. Siria speculates that the slime might have been seeking water. Suddenly, the slime strikes again, causing Centauria to accidentally touch Kimihiro's little brother in the process which causes her to lose balance in her consciousness. Following this, the slime seizes Kimihiro and transforms into the shape of a woman. The slime girl then imitates Kimihiro's previous actions and washes him using her sizable breasts. Due to her liquid nature, however, the imitation turns perilous as she almost drowns Kimihiro by enveloping him. He narrowly escapes by diluting her in the bathtub. Following this mishap, the group discusses what to do with the slime, and Poppy, who has taken a liking to the naked slime, reveals that she has named her Sue. Learning this, the other three decide to dress her. Kimihiro helps Sue into a non-absorptive suit, which paradoxically accentuates her sensual appearance. Following this, the girls discuss with Kimihiro that Sue might be an illegal immigrant. Overhearing her companion's discussion, Poppy misunderstands their intentions and thinks that they want to arrest Sue, and she ultimately flees with the slime girl. Kimihiro swiftly follows and catches up with them and encounters a group of children playing with Poppy, who apparently has been secretly slipping away from her caretakers. While the girls engage with the children, an impending accident involving a truck driven by the same racist couple is averted by Sue, who saves one of the children but falls off a bridge in the process. Luckily, Kimihiro positions himself beneath her, using the crashed truck as a buffer, saving the kind girl. Recognizing the need to protect Sue, Kimihiro decides to allow her to stay in his house and communicates this decision to the girls. Upon their return home, they find Smith waiting for them. As the girls devise a plan to keep Sue hidden from Smith, an interspecies exchange security squad's crew arrives unexpectedly. Faced with this situation, the girls hastily depart with Sue, inadvertently leaving Kimihiro behind. They contemplate returning for him, but the appearance of security forces compels them to hide behind a bush. As they are hiding, Poppy accidentally gets wet while assisting Sue, triggering a sensual response from the slime, who makes the harpy climax while absorbing liquid from her. Similarly, Siria's rump, which gets wet because of colliding with a tap, becomes a target for Sue's playful tentacles. The centaur's massive chest also succumbs to the slimy tentacles, and she climaxes as well. Meanwhile, Kimihiro searches for the missing girls and has a chance encounter with a girl named Mero, who crashes into him with a runaway wheelchair. After learning that he is searching for demi-human girls, Mero leads him to the park. At the park, they come across Mia, who is under the throes of Sue's seductive advances, causing her to climax due to the stimulation of her erogenous zones. Getting her fill from the Lamia, the slime girl puts her sight on Mero, but Kimihiro manages to save her from Sue's grasp by capturing the slime girl in a plastic bag. Back home, Smith surprises them by saying that the room is meant for Mero. Marone Lorelei, the mermaid, enters the room and introduces herself and takes her place in the new room's massive swimming pool. As Kimihiro carries Mero in a princess carry to put her in the pool, Mia jumps in, causing a stumble that results in a mermaid's wheelchair breaking. 
This leads to Kimihiro carrying Mero around the house. Mia's jealousy intensifies when Kimihiro accidentally fondles Mero's breast and sees her naked due to her slippery, mucus-coated body. Mia tries to rally Centauria and Poppy to counter what she suspects is the mermaid's plot to seduce Kimihiro. In an unexpected turn of events, Mia decides to don a skimpy swimsuit and enters Mero's room where Kimihiro and her are sitting by the pool. Attempting to seduce Kimihiro, Mia pushes his arm against her chest. Siria also enters, wearing a skimpy bra that barely contains her ample assets. But she departs hastily due to Poppy, who is beneath her, touching a sensitive point on her rump. Following this, Kimihiro knocks Mero into the water, prompting Mia to leap in after them, mistakenly interpreting Mero's fall as a romantic gesture. However, the cold water makes her movements sluggish, nearly causing her to drown. Mero rescues her, and Kimihiro clarifies that he was preventing the mermaid from being attacked by Sue again. Later, while Mia and Mero share a bath, the mermaid confesses that she has no intention of luring Kimihiro away from Mia. She reveals that mermaids desire a tragic love akin to the Little Mermaid. In a surprising moment, Mero fondles Mia's chest while explaining this philosophy. Centauria and Poppy also overhear their conversation, whereas Kimihiro, hearing the commotion from the bath, wonders if the two have become friends. As Mia endeavors to learn cooking, her attempt ends in accidental burns to her hands from a hot pot. Kimihiro offers comfort and discovers that she is shedding, but can't complete the process due to her bandaged hands. He agrees to help her with shedding, an activity that unexpectedly generates erotic moans from Mia. In a rather unfortunate turn of events, while working on shedding the skin near her belly area, Kimihiro's fingers accidentally slip and enter the Lamia's secret garden, prompting Mia to react by unintentionally knocking him unconscious. To make amends, Mia prepares dinner for Kimihiro. However, her lack of reliance on a cookbook results in a rather disastrous outcome in the form of a horrendous meal. Later, upon Kimihiro's return from shopping, Poppy announces her intention to lay an egg, prompting some initial misunderstandings before clarifying that it's an unfertilized egg. Before the group can prepare to help the harpy, Kasegi, a video director claiming to be shooting a documentary on interspecies exchange, arrives. Under the premise of participating in the interspecies exchange bill, the group agrees to an interview. As Kasegi tours the house, he manages to instigate various awkward incidents, including filming Mero during a swimsuit mishap and groping Centauria's chest. He also tries to take Mia's shed skin from her room. However, the situation takes a more serious turn when Mero enters the Lamia's room and informs them that Poppy is about to lay an egg. The group rushes to Poppy's aid, with Kimihiro assisting her in egg-laying process. Amidst this, Kasegi seizes the opportunity to film Poppy's vulnerable moment. Thankfully, Sue reads his intentions and reveals that he plans to sell the egg in the footage. Enraged by his exploitation, the girls confront Kasegi, who attempts to use the law to escape their wrath. However, Kimihiro intervenes, using a decoy egg to distract and punch Kasegi unconscious in a valiant manner. Seeing her caretaker's gallant figure, Poppy successfully lays her egg. Later, during dinner, Mia accidentally cooks Poppy's egg after it was stored in the refrigerator. Meanwhile, Kasegi in his house is berating an Arachne, an individual he's exploiting for her excessive web-building habits. In response, the Arachne captures Kasegi in her web and expresses a fond interest in his stories about Kimihito.